I appreciate you guys joining and getting ready to rock out here. We, um, we constantly are doing these webinars and we're constantly looking for what is the best way to give out information or what is the best way to share what we know from what we see, right? Because we're in a unique position. I don't know if you guys know this, but we have over 10,500 active signed partners we see between 6,000 and 8,000 referrals a month. So that's a lot of information, a lot of businesses, a lot of partners who work with those businesses. And what does that mean? That means we have access to a lot of data and we make data-driven decisions. We let the numbers tell us what lenders are doing, how they're doing it, and then we share all of that information back with you guys here on the web. So shout out to Marilyn who puts together our presentations. She came up with our new title, which is the Industry Insights. That's what these webinars are. It is insights into commercial finance. And today's topic is all about seasonality inside of businesses and how does that pertain to them getting access to the financing that they need to run their businesses efficiently. So we're going to do this quick presentation. Um, like I said, it's not very many slides. I think it's under 15 today, but we'll do this quick presentation. We will um, get a chance to do some Q&A here at the end. Um, this is me with a great picture right after a trip from Costa Rica. That's why I got such a great tan here. Um, but this is uh, me, Tony Semino. I'm going to be doing today's webinar. And we're going through, like it mentioned, all about seasonality. And I, I, you know, when we were putting this thing together, I thought it was important that you really understood how long we've been doing this. If we were to take all of the members of our sales team and add up their experience in commercial financing, we're talking hundreds of years in experience. We all were, were joking last night about we're getting old, um, you know, and, and we've been doing this for a really long time. But what comes from that is collaboration. It comes with a ton of knowledge and insight. And I can tell you, we are totally process driven. Our whole reason that we exist here at rock is to help business owners make educated decisions when it comes to taking financing within their business whether that decision is to take the financing or not whether that decision is hey is this the best offer or not we help them understand what is what is the information that they're seeing and how can i make educated decisions based on the information that i have based on where my business is, based on the type of business that I have. And we put all of that together. So that's why we're here doing this webinar is because we have a great foothold on the information that it takes to understand these businesses and the cycles that they go through. One of the biggest cycles is today's topic. It's seasonality within businesses. And what better time of year to talk about seasonality as we're really kind of starting to, to make the change. You know, we have uh, Groundhog Day every year in, in February that basically tells us, hey, this is what the weather is going to be like for the next few, you know, the next few weeks. Um, what that doesn't change, though, is the time of year. And businesses, based on the time of year, are constantly changing. If you're in the retail industry and you just came out of a rock star fourth quarter, whether you're e-commerce or you have a brick and mortar store where people are walking into your location, the, the fourth quarter is typically a big, uh, a big hitter for you. Now, let's just talk about a, a business that might be on the coast. Right. And, and, you know, maybe you're in Jersey and you're down the Jersey shore or like we are on Long Island where we're very driven by by what time of year it is and what types of businesses are even open or closed. So there's a lot of retail shops here on Long Island and in Jersey and, you know, that run up and down the coasts on either side of our country that their whole business is built around the summer months and what's coming here in the next few months. So 
there are so many factors, but a couple of them that lead to what we call seasonality inside of your business could be as simple as where is the business, right? The geography, where is that business? Are they in the Northern half of the United States? Or are they in the Southern half of the United States? I'm not saying that there's an imaginary line, but best believe when an underwriter looks at information for your business or for your customers' businesses, it's very black and white to them. The geography of where that business is matters so much. Obviously, the time of year, right? What season are we in would lead to seasonality, right? Not to use the same term twice, excuse me, the same term twice, but what season we're in totally matters, right? As far as where the business is, right? You might have multiple locations. Does that affect what type of seasonality you see? Do you have multiple teams that that operate your business, right? Um, even something as simple as the weather. The weather can cause seasonality. We've had a mild winter the past few years here on Long Island and and really in kind of the, the tri-state area of New York. I don't know about the rest of, of the country, but I know because I know how much snow I've been, I've shoveled the past couple of years. And it's not like years prior. Well, what does that mean? That changes everything if you're a landscaper, right? Or, or you're somebody that, you know, you do pools during the summer here on Long Island and in New York, right? If you're somebody that is looking forward to being able to plow parking lots or commercial properties or even residential properties as part of your income in the winter, and you haven't had that income for a couple of years, that totally changes things within your business, right? So, there are so many different factors that could go into why or what is a seasonal business or what makes a business seasonal. And that is just kind of scratching the surface. Now it's, oh, I went too quick. There it is. Why is it important to manage cash flow? Well, it's even more important to manage cash flow, in my opinion, effectively inside of a seasonal business. Why? Because you know there's going to be a downturn. And let, let's face it, all businesses have cycles. They all have times when they're they're hot or they're not, right? Um, but if you know that you have a slow season, well, now you can prepare for that slow season. You can make sure to have more cash on hand so that it helps you get through those, those months where you may not have as much business or any business at all going on, right? The other portion of this becomes as you start to ramp back up or get ready for that next season. Well, as you're doing that, what type of startup costs are you going to incur next season? Do you need to add new equipment? Do you need new uh, trucks and trailers? Or, you know, depending on the type of business we're talking about, it could be a substantial uh, it's substantial cost to starting each year, depending on what you have going on, what type of growth or, or challenges you might have faced, right? Um, what goes on in their, their slow seasons? Well, number one is you're going to have decreased revenue. So, a decrease in revenue. And this is, again, just statistics that we see with inside of, you know, of businesses that are seasonal is if they have that decrease in revenue and they didn't have enough cash on hand going into it, there's tons of cash flow issues, um, especially in that slow or low season. Right. Um, another issue becomes then marketing. Right. If I have cash flow issues where I don't have cash on hand, well, how do I then market? And you can't do that efficiently if you don't have cash on hand to do so. And that's that's what happens. Oh, I did it again. That's what happens when you don't have access to the right resources, right? Cash is a resource in business. So is borrowing cash. And borrowing cash efficiently is something that all business owners should look to do or should look at least as part of their options. A, a savvy business owner, they understand what all of their options are and where we're able to um, take advantage of the different products or resources that might be available to help me solve challenges or, or take advantage of opportunities, right? So in terms of borrowing for seasonal businesses, these are pretty much the top products that we see these business owners getting access to. Now, when you have a revolving line of credit, some things to keep in mind 
is this is probably the most flexible product on, on the the on the platform in terms of getting access to funding because if you get access to a revolving line of let's say 100 or even $150,000 right and you pull 70,000 well now if you got 150,000 you have a $70,000 balance with $80,000 available and as you start to make payments on that 70,000 you're only paying interest on the 70,000 that you borrowed you're only uh making payments on that 70,000 that you borrowed and as you paid that principal back it then becomes available to you on the line again, right? So if you paid back 20 or 30,000, that would be in addition to what's still available on the line, right? Um, some things to keep in mind about a, a revolving line of credit is it's typically at least a year plus time in business. Um, you typically need about a 650 uh, credit score. I, I like to basically say you need good or great to excellent credit to get a, a revolving line of credit. And the reason is, is because there's that flexibility within it. The other thing is, is you definitely want to make sure that you have a consistent use of funding or you're going to be able to pay it back pretty quickly and, and utilize the funding here and there. And that's for two reasons. Number one, if you're not using it, they're going to pull your line or, or drastically lower it. Um, the second part is, is if you did pull your $150,000 day one and you wanted to pay that back over the full, let's say, uh, you know, those terms typically are six to 24 months. So even if it was the full six months or the full 12 or 18 or 24 months, however long your term is, you're going to pay more for that money than you would had you taken it on a term loan. And that's where the term loans kind of come into this is, you know, these are kind of the the stepbrother or stepsister to the the line of credit. Most people like a line of credit because it it sounds great. Hey, I have this line of credit or this business line of credit or this B lock or this lock. You get all these fancy gurus out there talking about lines of credit. And, and listen, as far as marketing goes, nothing better than marketing a line of credit as far as using funding. And uh, the cost of capital on the best terms, a lot of times it's that's term loans. You're talking about where terms are typically longest and rates are typically cheapest. That's where everybody wants to live. They want the most money on the longest term with the cheapest amount. Well, that's usually where term loans are. Term loans have terms that typically range anywhere between two and five years, right? So 24 to 60 months. Um, those are typically monthly payments, true APR style deals. Um, you know, they're, they're usually anywhere between like eight and 18% these days. Um, you know, with obviously some things going a little higher than that, potentially, uh, depending on exactly what the business qualifies for, but term loans are a fantastic product because like I said, by having the longest term with the, with the, the lowest cost, you're also gonna have the cheapest payment, right? So as far as affordability goes, Term loans are great. Equipment financing and leasing. And this is probably this is probably business funding's best kept secret. You know, you get a lot of people talking about some of the tax advantages to borrowing money or buying equipment within your business. What most people don't understand is that even banks and lenders view equipment financing and leasing as totally different. Why is that interesting? Well, that's interesting because you really have two different types of funding. The two different types of funding that you have are collateralized or asset type of funding and then uncollateralized or unsecured. So you have secured and unsecured products. Equipment financing is essentially an asset-based lending type of product because what happens is, is the lender is leveraging that asset, the value of the asset. They will come take that asset if you don't make your payments, right? So there is, a, there is a certain security blanket via the asset or the piece of equipment that gives the lender a peace of mind. And that is huge. When you talk about underwriting, the best thing that you can have is a secure lender or a lender that feels secure in offering that funding because that's when your terms become most favorable, right? So when you talk about taking funding for a business, equipment financing should certainly be in the conversation. Now, if you are in a seasonal business, why equipment financing is so great is because they actually account for your seasonality. We have programs specific 
on our platform that are designed for you within a seasonal business. So they will allow you to make higher payments when you're uh, obviously in your busier seasons. And they will they will actually dip down the payments lower in your slower seasons. Um, we have some programs that have deferred payments, right? So if you are somebody that's ramping up here, um, you could potentially defer your payments for 90 to 120 days as the business starts to generate money. Okay, now we're going to make some payments on that deal. Um, all of these things are available inside of equipment financing. The other piece that's super important to understand about equipment specifically is this is the one area where startups can actually get help, right? So equipment financing, similar to term loans, similar to, to revolving lines of credit, you do need to be a credit worthy borrower, good to great or even excellent credit. Um, so like 650 plus, uh, 620 plus. Um, but what is interesting about it is you will qualify for more money in equipment because of the value of that piece of equipment. So if you have a business that makes 15, 20, 25, thousand dollars they might only qualify in cash for anywhere between like 15 and thirty thousand dollars um that's just the nature of the beast that's typically how it goes when you're talking about uh funding for small businesses now when you talk about equipment financing they could go out and buy a seventy five thousand dollar piece of equipment they can go out and buy an eighty thousand dollar piece of equipment or a hundred thousand dollar truck or trailer or truck and trailer right especially if it is as they call it, essential to the business. So as long as the equipment is essential to the business, we can get financing through equipment financing. And then you have kind of the jack of all trades and uh, that's the merchant cash advance, right? A cash advance allows you to do pretty much anything with the money at the most flexible of requirements. It's gonna require the least amount of time in business, the least amount of, uh, of deposits within the business, or even cash on hand. Um, there are also some very, very strong terms in the cash advance industry right now. Some of the longest terms, some of the highest dollar amounts are, are coming out of the cash advance product. So it, it's very important that you understand the whole board. I know sometimes cash advance gets a gets a bad name. Um, that has to that has to stop. As long as you know the lenders and know the products, you'll always get the best deals. And that's that's why Rock is here. We we work with all of the best lenders and all of the products. Um, so just again, some quick qualifying, this is more for you guys. Uh, when we send this thing out on the, on the back end, I know I mentioned a lot of this as I was going through, but a cash advance, no minimum FICO credit score. Once again, no minimum FICO credit score. It's the most, uh, the lowest barrier of entry in terms of getting cash for, for your business. Now, if you are a startup, or you are somebody with no time in business, you can still get equipment financing. You just have to have good credit. You also have to put uh, money down, right? So with equipment financing, you, you're typically putting down anywhere between 10 and 20% of the value of the equipment. So just keep that in mind when you are talking to borrowers about the different products and services that are available. Um, and then revolving lines of credit and term loans, basically they're, they're kind of like a uh, brother and sister. They're, they're, they're very similar, yet they're not. Um, they work completely differently, but their requirements are, are very close to the same. Um, you know, if you're going to qualify for a term loan, you're probably a pretty decent candidate for a revolving line. Um, and if you're going to qualify for a revolving line, you're probably a pretty decent candidate for a term loan. So a lot of times you, you, you have a business owner that qualifies for one, they qualify for both and it becomes, Hey, what is my actual need for the funding and how am I applying the funding and what is kind of the, the best, uh, the best option for me moving forward. As far as coaching points for you, for borrowers, right? Um, some takeaways, right? As far as where your customers and your focus should be when you are looking at funding for business owners, whether we're talking seasonal or not, number one is understanding the use of funds or the true borrowing needs. If you are able to understand, hey, I'm taking this much money, I'm applying it over here, and this is how I plan on making money with the money that I'm taking, well, now you have a true need or or a true use of the funding, and that helps provide a ton of clarity to the lenders, 
um, to the banks on the back end, allowing them to feel more comfortable in extending you and your cust well your customers credit or, or essentially some funding here, right? So the next part is make sure that you manage it responsibly. Um, all debt, as far as credit cards on the business go, as far as, you know, one of the biggest things and why we put this in here is because you get a lot of these credit gurus and credit repair people talking business credit, right? Business credit is so important but it's also one of the last factors that lenders take into account, meaning business credit is unique. You have a few different uh, ways that you can report business credit that are common to most people. Uh, you have Experian business credit. You have Dun & Bradstreet. Those are some of the, the most popular ones. But there's also inside of different industries, they report these things differently inside of different um different lenders they report to business credit differently. So it's not kind of, it, it's not the same as uh typical FICO credit score on, on the personal side. It's a little different. So when you're talking about business credit, the one thing you need to know is, Hey, it's really about the whole picture. Um, and, and what they're looking for is really any negative. You know, if, if you're, if you, are late on a payment here or you you missed something there on your business credit, unlike your personal credit, it doesn't totally put you in the tank because again, businesses are cyclical, businesses have issues. So it doesn't actually cause as much of a negative as you'd think. What, what really causes the negative though is just by having any of that at all. If you're somebody that is truly managing the debt responsibility uh, responsibly, excuse me, uh, you really have a good understanding of how I'm going to repay this thing. And it's already done. Excuse me. It's already done. In order for you to have a, a perfect business credit score, you actually have to pay everything early. That's that's a true fact. I, I don't know if that's common knowledge, but in order for you to have a perfect business credit score, everything's got to be paid early. Um, it, before the terms. So it, it's a little different. It, it's a crazy world to understand, but make sure that you're managing all debt responsibly because all lenders are going to look across all types of debt, um, even your personal debt. The last portion is understanding the repayment terms. You know, what makes these products different is simply verbiage in a contract. Every product has underwriters. Every lender has a, a team servicing the loans where they're going to call you and harass you if you don't make your payments, right? Like all of it works the same. You submit the same application a lot of the times. You know, a lot of it is similar information, even if, you know, some need a little bit more or some need a little bit less. But a lot of it is the, a similar process when it comes to borrowing money within your business. What actually makes it different? is when you're reading that contract and what are the repayment terms? Are there any prepayment penalties? You know, when you're talking about SBA deals or deals that are multi-year APR deals, a lot of times when you pay those off, they make you pay a penalty because they're not realizing the whole return based on that true APR that you would have paid if it would have went full term. If you're talking about more of a, a shorter term deal, well, those lenders, they like to get their money back out on the street. So if you want to pay them off early, a lot of times on like a, a cash advance style deal, you'll actually get a discount for paying off early. So if you only need the money for 30, 60, 90 days, a lot of times those products become a lot cheaper than the other ones because of that prepayment discount. So understanding those repayment terms and what the verbiage of that contract truly says that you as the um, as the borrower are responsible for is a true key for all of our customers. Whether you're talking about working those customers with Rock or whether you're talking about working with business owners even outside of Rock. All right, now into the nitty gritty. This is why you need to partner with us. Right. There is all of these nuances inside of all of these programs. The ability to offer those programs is what we pride ourselves on, giving you access to all of the exclusive products and programs that are available. I mean, just yesterday, you know, we're part of a, a few different broker groups. Um, you know, we were part of the BLB, the LBN, NACLB, AACFB, you name it, we're a part of it. Uh, give me an acronym inside of commercial finance. We got it. I'm a CLFP. We can we can keep going if you want. Um, but one of the the groups that we're a part of, uh, you know, we, we post in their 
Facebook group pretty often. And we shared a success story yesterday. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight inside of the, the comment that I left was um, this lender that we have exclusive rights to working their products with them. Um, we have a really, really strong relationship with them and their team, API lender. Uh, you know, we're, we're sharing a lot of information back and forth. But what they're actually doing right now is they're priding themselves on just beating the offers that we have. Um, so they're giving longer terms, higher dollar amounts at better rates than the biggest lenders on our platform. That's literally what they want to do. They want to eat up the top portion of our portfolio, um, and they're doing a great job of it. And what does that do? That gives us a huge competitive advantage in the marketplace. We are able to now go to market with the best terms. So good luck beating the best terms. <laughs> if you don't want to partner with Rock for anything else, partner with us for the best terms. Um, we can get you the best terms on the market. But now we're going to add a, a very important piece, which is an additional revenue stream, um, allowing you to monetize on leads you may already have or uh, leads that you wouldn't be able to monetize on in the past. The other thing is, is you can be as hands-on or as hands-off as you'd like, right? So you can be in the pipeline, tracking your deals in real time, tracking stages and statuses and understanding how you can help your customers continue to move the ball forward. Or you could take a complete step back, allow our team to step in and be your funding team. And we will do that as much or as little as you'd like. Um, also, another quick resource that is in this presentation, and this probably a question that we'll get here in a few minutes. Um, everybody gets a copy of the presentation. Everybody gets a copy of the report, uh, recording. Even if you don't want to listen to me again, send it to somebody else. Feel free. Do me the favor. Uh, we want to get our, our like count up, our, our watches up. So feel free. Um, but no, this is a resource for you. Totally. Um, feel free to screenshot this now. Feel free to print it when we send the when we send out the uh, the the presentation. Um, this is true for rock. But this is also just true in the marketplace right now. You want to go get any of these types of funding? This is what it takes. This is the documentation that your your borrowers are going to need. Um, you don't need to to work with Rock for this to be true. This is true across the board. Um, so again, just another resource for you guys is understanding, hey, what are all the products? What does it take to get access to them? Well, here it is. Um, another piece to our partnership. Right. And, and some things that I wanted to make sure that we didn't forget to mention um, about partnering with Rock, because I would have forgotten all of these things. Right. I did mention the we fund your deals thing a little in the middle there. Right. I, I said, you know, we can help work those deals for you. Right. But I didn't touch on the dedicated partnership advisor. That's a major, major advantage. One of the things that I hear over and over again from a lot of our partners, especially as they're onboarding is, hey, I've been looking for somebody like you guys. Um, you know, I've referred deals to this person or to that person, but they never call me back. I don't know who I'm working with. Every time I call, it's a different person. You know, they have a lot of turnover or I'm never working with the one person. Well, here you get a dedicated partnership advisor that we literally pay a salary to just to make sure that your partnership is successful. That's what their job is. Their job is to make sure you have all the marketing material, you have all the sales support, the training, the insight, Whatever you need from us and our team, that's their job. Um, if you don't know your dedicated point of contact, I know my contact info was at the beginning of this. Feel free to call me and I will put you in contact with that person. Um, but that's their whole job is to make sure that you define your success as a partner and we deliver on whatever your definition of success is. Um, one thing that I also, I think I, I announced it on the last webinar. So forgive me if I did. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that was announced on this webinar is our customized landing pages. You get access to white labeled marketing material and landing pages. One more time, white labeled marketing materials and landing pages. What does that mean? That means you don't have to promote rock. That means that you can promote your own brand with your own stuff and leverage rock. What does that actually mean? Well, I'm here to tell you a secret. That's how we've done this for the last 15 years. The only thing we've marketed is our lenders' products and services. So now you can do the same. You can market our lenders' products and services as your own. I invite you to challenge us on this. F help us help you. Allow us to, to do some heavy lifting, to do some marketing on your behalf, 
get involved with our portal, go in there, play around, see what you get access to. Um, it's a stellar out of the box partnership experience. I got to say it's, it's really top of the line, but what makes us the best. And I have no problem saying this is our customized approach. We're not just cookie cutter. You're not going to get the same partnership. Um, every single partner, you know, we have 10,500 partners and every one of them has a unique partnership with us. They refer us unique deals here and there, or they refer us all their business because of this. Um, all of them are very different. Uh, we have partners nationally, internationally. I mean, even on this call, I saw uh, some British Columbias and, and, you know, a few people out there. So, you know, there's a lot of different things that go on. Try us. We're open to working together. What is what does that mean for you? Let's do it. Um, we've sent partners to events on our behalf. We've sent them with T-shirts and gear and flyers. You name it, we've done it. I, I promise. We've wrapped cars. We've uh, been on the radio. We've been on television. Try us. <laughs> We're all about it. New feature. We used to do a lot of uh, success stories where I'd show you guys a couple of fundings that funded recently. Um, I thought that maybe highlighting a partner would be a little bit better, right? So um, we were recently working with a, a business consultant in their local community, right? And their business was driven heavily by word of mouth. They worked with their local bankers and, and CPAs. Um, you know, they were part of their local chamber of commerce. Um, and, and funny enough, found us through the webinar. Um, it was LinkedIn that led them to the webinar. And they said, you know what? I'll give it a shot. Uh, some of the things that they were initially dealing with were, well, there was a learning curve. They didn't really understand alternative finance. They knew the world existed, but they didn't really understand that there was all these products and all these lenders and, you know, all the different ways that the products can kind of work together. Um, you know, what we did was we took an approach where, hey, we're, you're part of our team. We're going to help you educate yourself so that you can educate your network. Um, and we have no problem doing that with anybody. Uh, there was also a unique expectation of, hey, what are his borrowers looking for versus what were they actually going to qualify for? Um, that kind of came with the learning curve, right? Uh, I always say there's a ton of uh, a ton of value in learning from doing and doing well, right? So what we try to do is start with crawl, walk, run. Let's refer over one or two businesses. We'll take a look. If we're able to get some deals done that way, great. If not, we're not going anywhere and neither are you. We'll figure this thing out by working together. Um, I always tell this story. One of our most successful referral partnerships, um, shout out to Tim who runs the partner team now, back when he landed this partner, uh, they referred in 623 leads and they were zero for 623. I'm not joking. We then funded 16 of their next 30 referrals. So it may take us time <laughs> to figure it out. But once we do and you turn it on, the law of averages takes over and we're right back to where we need to be. No, I'm just kidding. Um, another issue for them uh, early on was we had no brick and mortar presence, right? They were used to when they did business, they were going to their local community. They were going to that that network that they had built, a, 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 you know, over 10 or 15 years of constantly doing business, right? So how did they kind of shift their mindset a bit to allow us to be who we are? Well, like I said, number one, it became us working together, right? We started to show them that, hey, you you can be a part of the team. You can be involved in these deals as much or as little as you'd like. If you want to gather initial docs, if you want to help us pitch these deals, whatever it is, right? We do have a couple things that we have to have, right? We have to have a rock signed app. Um, we can put your logo on it, but it just has to be, it has to have our terms on it. Um, and the second part is, is that when we, when we go over terms, it has to take place on a rock recorded line. You could take the lead. We could take the lead. We could both lead and kind of, you know, use each other's strengths. It doesn't really matter to us. It just has to be something that we document because of our lenders and their processes, right? So once we understand, hey, this is your process and, and we're able to utilize what you're doing in terms of lead generation and, and the way you're coming across these opportunities, well, then we'll back into how we're able to help those business owners and get funding. I, I can assure you that. Um, but the other thing that you can do is, like I said, let us take the lead. 
and that's what he did that I think was was super unique was once he found his groove with us, um, he really relies on on the team now. And him and uh, he works with both Justins on the team. Um, we're able to align and, and we have two Justins. You got Justin Lamondo and Justin Wilson. I'm not sure if you guys have worked with either of them, but uh, both rock stars. Um, this gentleman works with both of them and Justin Wilson works with his customers and him and Justin have this great rapport. They're able to work off of each other. They have a great process. And now he funds, you know, anywhere between three and five deals a month. Um, and, and over the last three months, average 10 grand over, over $10,000 in commissions. So uh, again, not trying to brag whatsoever. I, I'm just showing you a real scenario where somebody came in, there was some hesitation. They bought in a little bit to the idea of, hey, it's 2024. If I'm going to continue to do business efficiently, I got to continue to grow um, and leverage the different ways that you do it. Um, some of the best companies and biggest brands out there have partnerships that are directly around funding. So feel free to to join on and 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 you know utilize us as well in the same way. Um, if you are new and you are hey salivating as I hope at this point of the uh, the presentation about doing some business with us, feel free to scan this QR code, become a partner now. And listen, if you are a partner of ours, I got a question for you: Are you following us on social media? Um, go follow us on Instagram, go follow us on, on TikTok. If you like funny videos on TikTok, uh, we post a lot of great content there, but if you're looking for more information, um, just around what we do and how we do it, our social media is huge. Feel free to follow me. I'm Tony rock on, on all social media. Um, feel free to follow the different reps that you work with. We're all there to share information, but it's also where you get the most up-to-date information. It's also where we're sharing the most information. So feel free to follow us on social media, whether you are using, uh, you are a partner or not. If you aren't a partner, become one, then follow us on social media. Um, you know, and realistically, let's work together. That's really what it comes down to. Um, we are going to jump over into a Q and a, um, for a bit here and answer some questions. I actually see Don just threw one into the, into the, the Q and a already. So shout out to Don for doing that. Um, but if you guys have some questions you want me to answer live, I'm going to be doing that in just a couple of seconds here. If you're like, Hey, I, I just want to talk to somebody, feel free to give us a call. Um, I know the team is standing by waiting for, to field some phone calls right now. Um, if you're looking to speak with your dedicated point of contact, you can call this number as well. Uh, they'll get you transferred over. Make sure you have access to the portal. Make sure you got access to the white label landing pages. Make sure you know how to utilize us and, and let's work together efficiently. As we say, let's rock. Um, thank you guys for, for joining and sticking around. Uh, those of you that ask questions, thank you for interacting. Um, like I said before, I love all of yous. And until next time, keep rocking. Thanks, everybody. This has been a Rock Studios production.